Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about grown woman fragrances. So when I think grown woman, I don't necessarily think age. So it's not necessarily about uh, your age or your maturity, but it's more about being confident in your own skin, comfortable in who you are. That can happen really at any age. But the fragrances that I want to share with you, they're fragrances that are like they're that you've got to be confident to wear them. You've got to be comfortable in your own skin or else maybe they'll make you feel confident. I don't know. But when I think about these fragrances, you've got to be comfortable in who you are. You don't need anyone to add value to you. You know your value. You, you don't need affirmation or approval from anyone. You're comfortable in your skin. You're comfortable comfortable in your character, you're comfortable in your sexuality, and to me that's the epitome of femininity, is just being comfortable and confident in your own skin. So these are fragrances that I think you have to have that quality, uh, at least to a certain degree, to pull off these fragrances. And when I think about them, like sometimes fragrances are bold enough that if you're not comfortable and confident in who you are, they're going to wear you. And you don't want that. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna wear that fragrance. You wanna own that baby. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna talk about today. I can't wait. If you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. I would love for you to be part of the Weird and Wonderful family. We are an awesome bunch here. And if you are ready are a part of the Weird and Wonderful family. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching every week. Thank you for, for all your wonderful comments. It's such a great community and I feel so happy to be a part of it. And without further ado, let's get into this. I don't know why, but when I think of these fragrances, and there's quite a few, there's about 12 here. These are fragrances that I don't think youthful flirtatiousness. I think more powerful femininity. Now the thing is, is that that can happen at any age. I'm not saying that you have to be older, but it typically happens when you're like, it, like heading into your 30s, 40s, 50s. A lot of times that's kind of when you discover yourself and you feel really confident in who you've become. Uh, as a woman. I don't think of flirtatious when I think of these. I think of uh, like potentially sexy, but I don't think flirtatious or, you know, uh, lighthearted. I think more power, uh, sexy, uh, confident. That's the vibe that these fragrances get off, give me for whatever reason. So I'm going to start with one that I have the sample of and I have the dupe of. I talk about it all the time, but now I've got the actual fragrance. I'm going to put it on to start the whole entire thing. That is Delina by Parfums de Marly. It smells powerful. It smells like a woman. Like it smells like what every woman should smell like. What I think of when I think of Delina is a woman sitting, like I think it's Venus, uh, you know, the Venus picture where there's a, a naked woman sitting in a, a big oyster shell, <laughs> like a big shell. So basically the woman's the pearl. Um, that's kind of what I think of when I think of Delina. I think, uh, you know, this, um, just this beautiful kind of feminine, uh, but also slightly sexual fragrance. Like, I don't know what it is about this one, but yeah, it just, it, it just exudes powerful femininity to me. I think it's totally intoxicating, honestly. I think it's uh, alluring. I think there's an innocence about it, but also a little bit of naughtiness to it somehow. It's just to me perfect. Like I love Delita. And yeah, the image that I get in my head is the chick sitting in an oyster, like somehow. So like kind of sprawled out, however, like that's the, the vibe I get. So anyway, first one, this is uh, a grown woman fragrance for sure. Next grown woman fragrance is Milano by Fragrance Dubois. This one to me smells like understated elegance. You don't need to try too hard. You just know who you are. And so you wear this one. There's a bit of a cigarette -y vibe, which for some reason I really enjoy. There's some fruity notes in this one. 
there's saffron, which I think is what's giving it kind of a little hint of a uh, cigarette-y type vibe. There's jasmine in this one as well. There's a little bit of leather. So this one is just, it's kind of sexy, but it's very understated. It's also very elegant. And I always think of a woman, uh, she's got glasses uh, and they maybe have that chain. So she takes them on and off. She's wearing a really crisp, uh, crisp white shirt. Uh, she's got kind of navy colored trousers on. She's sitting in a cafe reading a book. Uh, you think that, oh, she's probably just retired, but actually she's a high prof profile author. That's, the, that's who I think would wear this fragrance. Uh, it smells uh, fresh, clean, feminine, but this woman, she's got strong opinions, but she's controlled. Uh, like, like she's, she knows when to speak, she knows when to, you know, hold it back. Um, I see her almost like an entrepreneur, and I don't see this person as being like, uh, a, a, a boss lady in your face kind of mean or anything like that. This woman is just understated elegance. She's loaded. She's got a driver. Not that she uses them often because she walks mainly wherever she goes. Anyway, this fragrance is just uh, so beautiful. Uh, like I said, understated elegance, but definitely grown up. So this is beautiful. Next grown woman fragrance is Prada La Femme. I've talked about this a lot. I always refer to Miranda Priestley when I talk about this fragrance. Um, this one, it, it, like, although, like, it gives me that boss la lady money vibe, there's a cleanness to this one, but there's also a tropical kind of relaxing vibe, I think because it's got, um, I think it's got frangipani and ylang ylang in it as well. Uh, so there is a bit of that sun, uh, sun-kissed vibe to this fragrance. Um, I think it smells like a really beautiful clean white floral. Um, but it's not got any citrus uh, in it. Uh, it's got some sweetness instead. So there's a bit of beeswax. There's a bit of spices in this one. Um, it smells it smells expensive. And this woman, again, like I don't see a young, giggly person wearing this. I see a formidable woman wearing this one. Um, one thing I wanted to mention was uh, my my shoulders keep falling down. Essentially, I bought this dress. I love this dress. I wish I could wear it in public because it's so cute. But the problem is, is I bought it a, a, a couple sizes actually too big and not, not really realizing it. Plus it was, uh, plus there was no other size. So I bought it and the only thing that's holding it up <laughs> is the elastic around here so if I wore it in public I'd be scared my dress would literally fall off because it keeps falling off my shoulders and I think it actually kind of looks cute that way but like I'm, I'm trying to keep them up but they keep falling so uh yeah that's the story of this this business here I love I love the poofiness love the poofiness but it just keeps falling off so just bear with me anyway moving on uh, next grown woman fragrance is L'Interdit by Givenchy. Now this one, I haven't worn it very often. I wore it recently and thoroughly enjoyed it. I have to be in the right mood for this one uh, because it's so syrupy and sweet. So this one I find rather intoxicating. I think it's sexy. So this is mainly tuberose and pear is what you get. So you get this bubblegummy tuberose with this juicy, ripe pear, sweet pear. Uh, it's very sweet. It's very syrupy. In fact, it smells like you've somehow taken tuberose flowers and pear and you've reduced it into like a uh, some sort of reduction, uh, some sort of sauce that you could almost drizzle on something, but it's still like florally. Uh, so that's what it feels like to me. This one's quite heavy and it could be cloying, uh, but it's so intoxicating. It's so sexy. Uh, I just, I just think it's stunning. And for, I can't see a young, young girl 
ever wanting to wear something like this. Like the fragrance would wear her. I think that's the other thing when I think of grown woman fragrances. They're not fragrances, uh, like if you don't feel confident enough, the fragrance is going to wear you. You're going to feel self-conscious or whatever. This is one of those. These are generalizations, of course. Uh, you don't have to love this one to be a grown woman, like obviously, but uh, this one, I think it could easily wear the wearer uh, instead of the other way around, unless you really feel confident wearing like those tuberos sweet, um, you know, sweet kind of decadent fragrances. So uh, L'Interdit by Givenchy, beautiful fragrance. The last kind of more daytime fragrance that I want to share with you is Terracotta by Guerlain. Uh, this one, again, like I, I don't know what it is about this. Maybe it's the, the tropical florals are somehow f feeling grown woman to me. Uh, but this one smells like a rich lady that totally knows who she is. Um, this one has a little bit of an oily or buttery quality somehow. This one has tiare, it's got coconut. And to me, like I can see a bronze goddess type fragrance uh, as being a fragrance that many different people like. But the grown woman, she likes to wear this one. I find this one sexy. I find it intoxicating. It smells rich and luxurious. It smells mature, but again, when I think of mature, I'm not thinking elderly. I th when I think mature, I'm thinking totally comfortable in your own skin. So this one, this one is just amazing. I love it. Road women, reach for this one. Just try it. It's amazing. Now my next grown woman fragrance is Santal Royale by Guerlain. Now this one technically is Les Absolus d'Orient, I believe, uh, Santal Royale. So there's two different Santal Royales. This one is absolutely sexy uh, and definitely, definitely grown woman. Now this one is more unisex. It's kind of an oud rose uh, combination. It has jasmine and neroli in the opening. In the mid, it has rose, cinnamon, and peach. The base has oud, sandalwood, leather, amber, and musk. So this one just, it smells like a, a, an old world uh, like I think, I, I, I've said this before, I think of like the movie Zorro, so kind of like that Spanishy type feel is what I get out of this one. There's, the, there's kind of a leathery oud quality, it's rose, it's kind of sweet, it's really rich, um, but this is something that a powerful woman would wear. This woman, I think she probably smokes a cigar, not gonna lie, pretty sure she smokes a cigar every once in a while, or maybe a pipe. I've been tempted to take it up after smelling this because I just love it. And there's no tobacco in this one, but it just smells decadent and rich. It's sexy, uh, it's sultry, like sultry would be the word that I think of when I uh, think of Santal Royale, it's absolutely gorgeous. Like if you get your nose on this one, tell me what you think. I hope that you can sniff this somewhere. In Canada, uh, some of the Bay stores, if, if, especially if they're kind of the flagship store in your city, they carry Santal Royale by Guerlain. And it is so beautiful. Um, it's my favorite out of this type of collection, like with these type of bottles. This is my favorite. There's a few others in the collection that I really enjoy. But this one, definitely grown woman. Another one that I think is kind of grown woman worthy is Decadence by Marc Jacobs. Now this would definitely not be for everybody. Um, I, I hate this bottle. Like I've always hated this bottle. I'll never like this bottle. It, yeah, it's just horrible. But um, I actually really enjoy the fragrance. Now this was one that I had to warm up to because it's got a real green vanilla. Uh, there's also plum in this one. I find plum to be kind of a more mature, a uh, little bit more grown type fruit. So it's a little bit more decadent. It's a little bit more luscious. To me, out of, a, uh, out of all the fruits uh, in fragrance, plum is kind of the sexy one. In my opinion, it's a little bit more grown up. Uh, it's a little bit sultry. It's a little bit decadent. Um, it's uh, a, a richer kind of a little bit, 
that can smell a little bit indolic almost. Uh, and this one uh, to me is no exception. So this has plum saffron and iris in the opening. And then it has orris, jasmine, sandback, and rose in the mid. The base is liquid amber, papyrus, and vetiver. Uh, this is a, a very green vanilla. I actually have come to really, really enjoy this one actually more than most vanillas because it's not sickly sweet. Uh, I love the fact that it's got the sam saffron and the plum in it to kind of balance it out, kind of smoke it out a little bit without it being smoky or, or oody feeling. Uh, there's a bit of a powdery quality to this one. And then, yeah, there's a greenness to this one uh, that I just find really fascinating. So this one is a, a beautiful fragrance, but definitely not uh, for your average wearer. You've got to like green and you've got to like that kind of vanilla plum type vibe to uh, kind of jive with this one. But I don't see this one even remotely as flirty. I see this one more sensual and again, uh, a little bit sultry, a little bit more a little bit more grown. The next one is a lot more sweet but still a lot more grown grown up uh, than some and that is uh, La Rive Taste of Kiss or La Nuit Tresor by Lancome. Uh, I, I would tend to go for that one. I just happen to have this one. Uh, I'm actually planning on getting La Nuit Tresor because I love it so much and I find it a lot more smoky than the La Rive version, although this is a great version as well. La Nuit Tresor or Taste of Kiss by La Rive. It has pear, tangerine, and bergamot in the opening. And then it has strawberry, vanilla, orchid, black rose, and passion fruit in the mid. The base is praline, caramel, lychee, vanilla, patchouli, incense, coffee, licorice, coumarin, and papyrus. So what I get out of this is kind of a smoky, uh, caramel, praline-y type fragrance. Uh, but it certainly isn't like your, your you know, your happy-go-lucky, sweet, uh, sweet gourmand fragrance. This one has that incense, a little bit of uh, smokiness. There's the patchouli, there's lychee. Uh, so things that are a little bit more sensual and sultry, I find in this one. Uh, there's that smoky quality. It's very decadent. Uh, so this is a beautiful fragrance, but definitely I don't think flirty with this one. Again, I think sensual and sexual uh, with this one. So uh, this one, just, just gorgeous. A powerhouse fragrance, in my opinion. The next fragrance that I think is totally grown woman is Dior Addict. This one is kind of a spicy vanilla. It has blackberry and mandarin leaf in the opening. The middle notes are jasmine, night blooming, cereus, orange blossom and rose, and then the base is vanilla, tonka bean, tonka bean and sandalwood. So this again, it's just kind of a grown woman's sexy vanilla, uh, kind of in the same category as decadence. So it's a little bit, it, it's got a decadent quality to it. I don't find it overly sweet, even though it's primarily vanillic. Uh, it's it's um, a little bit powdery seeming. Uh, there's a little hint of green in this one, uh, not as green as decadence, uh, but then with that blackberry and I don't know, I just find this one really sexy. This one, I think of a femme fatale type chick, but she's older, like I'm thinking like 60 plus, but she's a femme fatale and like, she just attracts men like magnets. Like she just attracts them. They just come like moths to a flame. Uh, you know, she's alluring, she's uh, provocative, she, She's totally 100% comfortable and confident in her womanness. And uh, yeah, like even the young guys just come running mad because she wears Dior. <laughs> oh, seriously, th this woman, she's a little older. Like she's uh, she's a little bit older, uh, but it doesn't change the fact that she's a powerhouse of femininity. Okay, I've got three more I'm gonna quickly mention to you. Swiss Arabian Shaghoff Oud. If you want something sexy, uh, this is supposed to be very similar to Lancome's Oud Bouquet. Um, it, it's, it's just beautiful. It's a rose oud praline combination. So kind of a sweet rose, but then with that oud. Definitely sexy, 
grown woman, this, you, you have to be comfortable and confident to wear this because otherwise this one is another one that will totally wear you. Last but not least is Alien by Mugler. Now this one is, it's an oldie but a goodie. It's, it's like a spicy jasmine amber. It's, it's woody. Um, it's so, so uber sexy. It's potent. It's powerful. It's bold. And when I think of grown woman, those are kind of the, the descriptors. So alien to me is the epitome of a grown woman. Uh, again, if you are not comfortable in your own skin, I can see this one wearing you and you don't ever want that. But if you're comfortable as who you are, this one is a gorgeous one to rock. Again, when I think of grown woman, it's not as much an age as it is a mindset. So I hope that makes sense. These are fragrances that you have to be confident to wear. Um, I love them all. And yeah, there's not really a favorite because they're all fantastic. So what is your grown woman fragrance? What's that fragrance that you put it on and you feel like a powerhouse? I would love to know. Leave it in the comments and... Have an amazing week. We'll talk to you soon.